Chapter 4 The Cheshire Cat There was a boy outside the door, with a large letter in his hand. He was dressed like a boy, but his face was very like a fish, Alice thought. The fish boy knocked at the door, and a second later a large plate came flying out of an open window. A letter for the Duchess, the fish boy shouted. He pushed the letter under the door and went away. Alice went up to the door and knocked, but there was a lot of noise inside and nobody answered. So she opened the door and walked in. She found herself in a kitchen, which was full of smoke. There was a very angry cook by the fire, and in the middle of the room sat the Duchess, holding a screaming baby. Every few minutes a plate crashed to the floor. There was also a large cat, which was sitting on a chair and grinning from ear to ear. Please, Alice said politely to the Duchess, why does your cat grin like that? It's a Cheshire cat, said the Duchess. That's why. I didn't know that cats could grin, said Alice. Well, you don't know much, said the Duchess. Another plate crashed to the floor and Alice jumped. Here, the Duchess went on. You can hold the baby for a bit, if you like. The Queen has invited me to play croquet, and I must go and get ready. She pushed the baby into Alice's arms and hurried out of the room. Oh, the poor little thing, said Alice, looking at the baby, which had a very strange face. She took it outside into the wood and walked around under the trees. Then the baby began to make strange noises, and Alice looked into its face again. Its eyes were really very small for a baby, and its nose now looked very like the nose of a pig. Don't make noises like that, my dear, said Alice. It's not polite. You're beginning to sound like a pig. But a few minutes later, there was no mistake. It was a pig. Alice put it carefully on the ground, and it ran quietly away on its four legs into the wood. I'm pleased about that, Alice said to herself. It will be a good-looking pig, but it would be terrible to be a child with a face like that. She was thinking about pigs and children when she suddenly saw the Cheshire cat in a tree. The cat grinned at her, and she went nearer to it. Please, she said, can you tell me which way to go from here? But where do you want to get to? said the cat. It doesn't really matter, began Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. But I would like to get somewhere, Alice explained. If you just go on walking, said the cat, in the end you'll arrive somewhere. That was true, thought Alice, but not very helpful, so she tried another question. What kind of people live near here? To the left, the cat said, lives a hatter. And to the right, lives a march hare. You can visit either of them. They're both mad. But I don't want to visit mad people, said Alice. We're all mad here, you know, said the cat. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know that I'm mad, he said Alice. Of course you're mad, said the cat. Only mad people come here. Alice was thinking about this, but the cat went on, Are you playing croquet with the queen today? I would like to very much, said Alice, but nobody has invited me yet. You'll see me there, said the cat, and vanished. 
Alice was not really surprised at this, because so many strange things were happening today. She was still looking at the tree when, suddenly, the cat appeared again. I forgot to ask, said the cat. What happened to the baby? It turned into a pig, Alice said. I'm not surprised, said the cat, and vanished again. Alice began to walk on, and decided to visit the March Hare. It's the month of May now, she said to herself, so perhaps the hare won't be as mad as he was in March. Suddenly, there was the Cheshire cat again, sitting in another tree. Alice jumped in surprise. Do you think, she said politely, that you could come and go more slowly? All right, said the cat. And this time it vanished very slowly. First its tail went, then its body, then its head, and last, the grin. Well, I've often seen a cat without a grin, thought Alice, but never a grin without a cat. Soon she saw the house of the March Hare in front of her. It was a large house, so she ate a little piece of mushroom to get bigger, and walked on. Chapter 5 a mad tea party. There was a table under a tree outside the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea. A Dormouse was sitting between them, asleep. The three of them were all sitting together at one corner of the table, but the table was large and there were many other seats. Alice sat down in a big chair at one end. Have some coffee, the March Hare said in a friendly voice. Alice looked all round the table, but she could only see a teapot. I don't see any coffee, she said. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then why did you ask me to have some, said Alice crossly. It wasn't very polite of you. It wasn't very polite of you to sit down. We haven't invited you to tea, said the March Hare. But there are lots of seats, said Alice. Your hair's too long, said the Hatter, looking at Alice with interest. It's not polite to say things like that, said Alice. The Hatter looked surprised, but he said, Why is a bird like a desk? Alice was pleased. She enjoyed playing word games, so she said, that's an easy question. Do you mean you know the answer, said the March Hare. Yes, said Alice. Then you must say what you mean, the March Hare said. I do, Alice said quickly. Well, I mean what I say. And that's the same thing you know. No, it isn't, said the Hatter. Listen to this. I see what I eat means one thing, but I eat what I see means something very different. Alice did not know what to say to this. So she took some tea and some bread and butter while she thought about it. The Dormouse woke up for a minute and then went to sleep again. After a while the Hatter took out his watch, shook it, then looked at it sadly. Two days slow. I told you that butter wasn't good for watches, he said angrily to the March Hare. It was the best butter, said the March Hare sadly. Alice was looking at the watch with interest. It's a strange watch, she said. It shows the day of the week, but not the time. But we know the time, said the Hatter. It's always six o'clock here. Alice suddenly understood. Is that why there are all these cups and plates, she said. It's always tea time here, and you go on moving round the table. 
Is that right? But what happens when you come to the beginning again? Don't ask questions, said the March Hare crossly. You must tell us a story now. But I don't know any stories, said Alice. Then the March Hare and the Hatter turned to the Dormouse. Wake up, Dormouse, they shouted loudly in its ears. Tell us a story. Yes, please do, said Alice. The Dormouse woke up and quickly began to tell a story, but a few minutes later it was asleep again. The March Hare poured a little hot tea on its nose, and the Hatter began to look for a clean plate. Alice decided to leave and walked away into the wood. She looked back once, and the March Hare and the Hatter were trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. Well, I won't go there again, said Alice. What a stupid tea party it was. Just then she saw a door in one of the trees. How curious, she thought. But everything is strange today. I think I'll go in. So she went in. And there she was, back in the long room with the little glass table. At once, she picked up the gold key from the table, unlocked the little door into the garden, and then began to eat a piece of mushroom. When she was down to about 30 centimetres high, she walked through the door, and then, at last, she was in the beautiful garden with its green trees and bright flowers. Chapter 6 The Queen's Game of Croquet Near the door there was a rose tree and three gardeners, who were looking at the roses in a very worried way. What's the matter? Alice said to them. You see, miss, said the first gardener, these roses are white, but the queen only likes red roses, and she. The queen, said the second gardener suddenly, and at once, the three gardeners lay down flat on their faces. Alice turned round and saw a great crowd of people. It was a pack of cards walking through the garden. There were clubs, they were soldiers, and diamonds, and ten little children, they were hearts. Next came some kings and queens. Then Alice saw the white rabbit, and behind him, the knave of hearts. And last of all, came the king and queen of hearts. When the crowd came near to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her, and the queen said, Who are you? My name is Alice, your majesty, said Alice very politely. But she thought to herself, they're only a pack of cards. I don't need to be afraid of them. And who are these? said the queen, looking at the three gardeners. Then she saw the white roses, and her face turned red and angry. Off with their heads! She shouted, and soldiers hurried up to take the gardeners away. The queen turned to Alice. Can you play croquet? she shouted. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on, then, shouted the queen. The crowd began to move on, and Alice went with them. It's, it's a very fine day, said a worried voice in her ear. Alice saw that the white rabbit was by her side. Very fine, said Alice. Where's the duchess? Shush, said the rabbit in a hurried voice. She's in prison, waiting for execution. What for, said Alice. But just then the queen shouted, get to your places, and the game began. It was the strangest game of croquet in Alice's life. The bulls were hedgehogs, and the mallets were flamingos. And the hoops were made by soldiers, 
who turned over and stood on their hands and feet. Alice held her flamingo's body under her arm, but the flamingo turned its long neck first this way and then that way. At last, Alice was ready to hit the ball with the flamingo's head. But by then, the hedgehog was tired of waiting and was walking away across the croquet ground. And when both the flamingo and the hedgehog were ready, there was no hoop. The soldiers too were always getting up and walking away. It really was a very difficult game, Alice thought. The players all played at the same time, and they were always arguing and fighting for hedgehogs. Nobody could agree about anything. Very soon, the queen was wildly angry and went around shouting boff with his head or doff with her head about. Once a minute, Alice began to feel worried. The queen is sure to argue with me soon, she thought. And what will happen to me then? They're cutting people's heads off all the time here. I'm surprised there is anyone left alive. Just then she saw something very strange. She watched carefully, and after a minute or two she saw that the thing was a grin. It's the Cheshire Cat, she said to herself. Now I'll have somebody to talk to. How are you getting on? said the cat, when its mouth appeared. Alice waited. I can't talk to something without ears, she thought. Slowly the cat's eyes, then its ears, and then the rest of its head appeared. But it stopped at the neck, and its body did not appear. Alice began to tell the cat all about the game. It's very difficult to play, she said. Everybody argues all the time, and the hoops and the hedgehogs walk away. How do you like the queen? said the cat quietly. I don't, said Alice. She's very, just then she saw the queen behind her, so she went on, clever. She's the best player here. The queen smiled and walked past. Who are you talking to? said the king. He came up behind Alice and looked at the cat's head in surprise. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. I'm not sure that I like it, said the king. But it can touch my hand if it likes. I prefer not to, said the cat. Well, said the king angrily. He called out to the queen, my dear. There's a cat here, and I don't like it. The queen did not look round. Off with its head, she shouted. Call for the executioner. Alice was a little worried for her friend, but when the executioner arrived, everybody began to argue. I can't cut off a head, said the executioner if there isn't a body to cut it off from. You can cut the head off, said the king, from anything that's got a head. If somebody doesn't do something quickly, said the queen, I'll cut everybody's head off. Nobody liked that plan very much, so they all turned to Alice. And what do you say, they cried. The cat belongs to the duchess, said Alice carefully. Perhaps you could ask her about it. She's in prison, the queen said to the executioner. Bring her here at once. But then the cat's head slowly began to vanish, and when the executioner came back with the duchess, there was nothing there. The king ran wildly up and down, looking for the cat, and the duchess put her arm round Alice. I'm so pleased to see you again, my dear, she said. Let's get on with the game, the queen said angrily, 
and Alice followed her back to the croquet ground. The game went on, but all the time the queen was arguing and shouting off with his head or off with her head. Soon there were no hoops left, because the soldiers, who were the hoops, were too busy taking everybody to prison. And at the end there were only three players left, the king, the queen, and Alice. The queen stopped shouting and said to Alice, Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, said Alice. I'm not sure what a mock turtle is. Then come with me, said the queen. They found the mock turtle down by the sea. Next to him was a griffin, asleep in the sun. Then the queen hurried away, saying, I have to get on with some executions. The griffin woke up and said sleepily to Alice, It's just talk, you know. They never execute anybody. Alice was pleased to hear this. She felt a little afraid of the griffin and the mock turtle because they were so large. But they were very friendly and sang songs and told her many stories about their lives. The mock turtle was in the middle of a very sad song when they all heard a shout a long way away, It's beginning. Come on. We must hurry, cried the griffin. It took Alice by the hand and began to run. The Mock Turtle and the Griffin were very friendly. Chapter 7 Who Stole the Tarts? The King and Queen of Hearts were sitting on their thrones when Alice and the Griffin arrived. There was a great crowd of birds and animals, and all the pack of cards. Soldiers stood all around the Knave of Hearts, and near the King was the White Rabbit, with a trumpet in one hand. In the middle of the room there was a table with a large plate of tarts on it. They look good, thought Alice, who was feeling a little hungry. Then the white rabbit called out loudly, Silence! The trial of the knave of hearts will now begin. He took out a long piece of paper and read, The queen of hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them all away. Very good, said the king. Call the first witness. Alice looked at the jury, who were now writing everything down. It was a very strange jury. Some of the jurymen were animals and the others were birds. Then the white rabbit blew his trumpet three times and called out, First witness. The first witness was the hatter. He came in with a teacup in one hand and a piece of bread and butter in the other hand. I'm very sorry, your majesty, he said. I was in the middle of tea when the trial began. Take off your hat, the king said. It isn't mine, said the hatter. Stolen. Write that down, the king said to the jury. I keep hats to sell, explained the hatter. I don't have a hat myself. I'm a hatter. Give your evidence, said the king, or we'll cut your head off. The hatter's face turned white. I'm a poor man, your majesty, he began, in a shaking voice. Just then Alice had a strange feeling. After a minute or two she understood what it was. Don't push like that, said the dormouse, who was sitting next to her. I'm nearly falling off my seat. I'm very sorry, Alice said politely. I'm getting bigger and taller, you see. Well, you can't do that here, said the Dormouse crossly, and he got up and moved to another seat. The Hatter was still giving evidence, 
but nobody could understand a word of it. The king looked at the queen, and the queen looked at the executioner. The unhappy hatter saw this, and dropped his bread and butter. I'm a poor man, your majesty, he said again. You're a very poor speaker, said the king. He turned to the white rabbit. Call the next witness, he said. The next witness was the duchess's cook, who spoke very angrily and said that she would not give any evidence. The king looked worried and told the white rabbit to call another witness. Alice watched while the white rabbit looked at the names on his piece of paper. Then, to her great surprise, he called out loudly, Alice! Here, cried Alice, jumping to her feet. Here, cried Alice, jumping to her feet. What do you know about these tarts? said the king. Nothing, said Alice. The queen was looking hard at Alice. Now she said, All people a mile high must leave the room. I'm not a mile high said Alice. And I won't leave the room. I want to hear the evidence. There is no more evidence, said the king very quickly, and now the jury will. Your majesty, said the white rabbit, jumping up in a great hurry. We've just found this letter. There's no name on it, but I think the knave wrote it. No. I didn't, said the knave loudly. Read it to us, said the king. Where shall I begin, your majesty, asked the rabbit. Begin at the beginning, said the king, and go on until you get to the end, then stop. Everybody listened very carefully while the white rabbit read these words. They tell me you have been to her and talked of me to him. She thought I was a gardener, but said I could not swim. He tells them that I have not gone. We know that this is true. If she decide to hurry on, what will they do to you? I gave her one, they gave him two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you. But they were mine before. That's a very important piece of evidence, said the king. He looked very pleased. Now the jury must. If anybody in the jury can explain that letter, said Alice, she was not afraid of anything now. Because she was much bigger than everybody in the room, I'll give him sixpence. It's all nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. The jury busily wrote this down. She thinks it's all nonsense. All nonsense, eh? said the king. He read some of the words again. But said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? he said to the knave. The knave's face was sad. Do I look like a swimmer, he said. And he didn't, because he was made of paper. The king smiled. I understand everything now, he said. There are the tarts, and here is the knave of hearts. And now the jury must decide who the thief is. No, no, said the queen. Off with his head. The jury can say what it thinks later. What nonsense, said Alice loudly. The jury must decide first. You can't. Be quiet, said the queen, her face turning red. I won't, said Alice. Off with her head, screamed the queen. Nobody moved. It doesn't matter what you say, said Alice. 
You're only a pack of cards. Then the pack of cards flew up into the sky and began to fall on Alice's face. She gave a little scream and woke up. She was lying next to her sister under the trees, and some leaves were falling on her face. Wake up, Alice dear, said her sister. You've been asleep a long time. Oh, I've had a very curious dream, said Alice, and she told her sister all about the strange adventures in her wonderful dream. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.